Hello and welcome to this, the fifth video in the Stewart Administration video tutorial series. In the first video, <laughs> for, for regular watchers you probably don't need this, but just as a quick recap, in the first video we looked at how to, what is Jira and how to get your free trial. In the second video we went through the top level system settings for Jira administrators. In the third video we looked at how to set up a basic project. In the fourth video we covered fields and screens. And in this video, which is a lot nicer you'll be pleased to, to hear for those of you who have just come from the fourth video, this is all about users groups, notifications and permissions. So uh, this is quite a fun video, quite a fun area to explore within JIRA. Okay, So let's get started. Okay, so uh, I'll have this up so I know roughly what I'm doing. Let's see, users, groups, notifications and permissions. So let's start with users. User management. Okay. Right. Okay. So what we're going to do is create a brand new user. I'm going to use this email address. Uh, so I, depending on how you want to do it, you can either invite users, so you can send a, an email address, and then they'll get uh, get a, an email that will say you've been invited to Jira, and then if they click through, they'll get a sign up form. Okay. Alternatively, you can, especially for closed systems, you can create users yourself. Okay. So you click on create user uh, under, under user management, give them a username, so in this case we're going to call this test user, ok, give it a password, full name, test user, but of course, and email address right there, ok, simple, that's all we need to do, ok, and we click on create, right, so that's really, as, cr as far as creating a new user, that's all there is to it, Perfect, no worries, right? But what we now want to do is uh, bespoke this a little bit more. So I wonder whereabouts we're looking. So if we go into groups, we can uh, add this. Uh, okay, okay, let's do this slightly differently. So we're going to groups. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to create a group. So the group we're going to call, uh, we're going to create, is going to be called, let's say, testers. Okay. So this user will belong to the testers group. Yep, simple. Okay, and now you'll see that in addition to all the default groups, there is now a testers group as well. Okay, so we click on edit members. Okay, and then we can add a member. So what do we call him? Test user, perhaps? Test user. See if it's that one. There we go. Excellent. So he's now in that test users group, as you can see. Okay, and obviously then you can uh, remove him as well or uh, further bespoke it as well. Okay, so that's a really simple, uh, really simple approach. Yep. Uh, project roles generally I don't typically use that much. Um, you're free to use them more, um, but uh, essentially there's three sorts of tiers. In, uh, certainly. A, a, in the more recent versions, there's basically users, developers, and administrators. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's. I like I so say I typically don't use them. I think that groups are a much better way, but you can specify the bits here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Right, and uh, next up. So after that, uh, let's have a look at notifications. So, notifications are uh, a really fun part of any project. Okay. So I go into the Fun Bugs project and click on Administration and then scroll down to Notifications. Okay. Right. So uh, no, not having trouble. Right. So what these are all about is uh, when should a user get emailed? Okay. And you can see that there's various different criteria on the left-hand side. So when an issue is created or updated or assigned and so on and so forth, all these various actions that occur, okay, and <coughs> you'll see on this side you can see who's going to get notified, so in this case it would be an issue is created, so the person who reported the issue will get an email, the person it's been assigned to will get an email, and also anyone who's watching it will get an email. I'm not sure if, if that would, uh, if there would be any watchers at that stage, but anyway that's, that's, uh, that's uh, fine, anyway it gets the job done. Okay, and so yeah, now you may recall uh, a while ago I mentioned something about request update in a previous video, and I was talking specifically, uh, let's see if 
I remember myself. So system. Okay. Yep. So we would go down to uh, events. Yep. So what we're saying is that there's effectively a request update event. Yep. And uh, you need to check the previous video for, for a full description of this. Uh, video 2. Mm, somewhere in the middle. <laughs> okay. But essentially what we've done is we've set up a uh, event here called request update. And what we're going to do in a while is we're going to, in the notification scheme here, define who should be updated. Okay. So we'll click on edit notifications and... Uh, well, in fact, I'm, I'm skipping ahead a little bit here, but we'll say, so when somebody clicks on the request update button in the workflow, okay, the following people will get notified. And we're going to say that everyone in the group of testers gets notified, okay? You can also do it on the basis of current assignee or current user, a single user such as test user, there we are or whatever but we'll stick with group okay so we click on add okay and you will see now that whenever that request update button is pushed once we've configured the workflow okay once we've configured the workflow the people in the group testers will get notified so it's very simple makes yep no nothing to worry about and you can further bespoke this so you could say well uh, actually does uh, I don't know when a uh, I don't know let's say when an, an issue is created should should the reporter really get an email isn't that just adding to his spam so you could delete that for example yeah so you delete that and uh, yeah and that's all there is to it really it uses the email that you provide for the user and based on what happens uh, you can then uh, specify it here now what I will say is this is the default notification scheme, okay? If we were going to create a custom one just for um, just for our Funbugs project, then we would add one here. Yep. So we'd go Funbugs. Uh, actually, there's a better way of doing this because I'm lazy. Click on Copy, okay, and then just edit it, and we'll call that Funbugs, okay? Funbugs, okay? Update. And then what we'd need to do is we'd need to go into projects, uh, yep, projects, uh, wherever, wherever about it is, projects, fun bugs. Probably could have speeded it up going that way, but never mind. Um, and then back to notifications, okay. And then actions, use a different scheme, and of course we'll select the scheme that we've set up, so fun bugs, okay. And associate it, and that will then determine specific notifications for specific projects. Easy peasy, right? Nothing to worry about there. So, so far we have created some users, created a group and added a user to a group, created a notification scheme, uh, roughly speaking at least, um, and now we're going to cover permissions. So permissions is another fun area. Uh, what we want to do is get back into our admin area, and close that down and close that down. So then we head over to permission schemes, okay? And what you need to do, uh, you might actually you might have noticed that I've skipped over issue security schemes, and that's generally because uh, personally I've not used that very much. I don't feel that that's necessarily a requirement. If you set these permission schemes up well, you probably won't need issue security schemes, though you may disagree. Uh, feel free to look into that in more detail outside of this tutorial, okay? But I think that that's, uh, if you've got this sussed, you can at least secure your system, okay? So, uh, at the moment, you'll see that there's a default permission scheme that both projects are using. What we want to do is have a bespoke one just for us. So, uh, shall I copy? No, let's actually, let's actually do a proper one. So we'll call this Funbugs. Click on Add, okay? And then click on Permissions. So, uh, what you'll see, uh, oh actually the default one will give you a better idea so if we go into the default one you'll see that uh, these are the uh, permissions on the left can you administer the project uh, administrators can but users can't right can you browse projects well any user can can you uh, you remember earlier we were talking about project roles well can people view issue source tab well developers can but users can't okay 
and so on and so forth. So who can create issues, who can edit issues, who can do all these various different issue uh, options and transitions such as uh, can they edit their own comments, can they delete comments, can they uh, I don't know, add attachments, delete attachments and so on. And this is a really very powerful feature of Jira. Uh, one of the reasons I really like it a lot. Um, so uh, if I now go into our one Okay, what we're going to do is begin to bespoke it. So you might think you have to go into each one individually, but no, because if you click on add, you will see that it's actually a multi select list. So what we want to do is for every single operation there, we want to allow, uh, let's see, group, uh, or let's say project role users. So every user can do every permission there, okay? Okay, but that's very, very liberal, okay? But that's just an example. What we might want to do, in fact, is say, well, obviously, we don't want to allow uh, someone to administer the project. So instead, for administrators, we could say anyone in the group administrators or in the project role administrators. See what I mean? See what I'm doing here? Okay. So there's two different ways of achieving the same outcomes by adding admin users to the admin group or by um, or by having uh, users in the admin project role. I typically maintain both uh, just in case you get any uh, like inconsistency across the system okay so or you could do project lead or whatever so uh, we'll stick with project role for the time being. Okay, and that's uh, really all there is to it. I mean, I can uh, just talk through what these permissions are about. Administer is straightforward. Browse projects is straightforward. Uh, view issue source tab, uh, not sure. Uh, view read-only workflow, that just gives you a picture of the workflow. Create issues, self-explanatory. Edit issues, self-explanatory. Schedule issues is about allowing someone to modify a due date. Um, Move issues allows people to move issues between projects or workflows. So if we were to go into this issue here, okay, right, um, let's just find a ticket. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where's an issue? Let's go into that one. Okay. So uh, what we could do is we could click on this. We could click on move, and then we could move it to a new project. Okay, fine or we could move it to a new issue type as well. Yep, simple. So very straightforward stuff, yep. Okay, <clears throat> uh, assign issues, well that simply allows you to say, uh, let's go back. So assigning issues, you can simply use that button to assign it to anyone in the system. Okay, uh, assignable user, now this is an interesting one. Assignable user is all about saying who is um, who can an issue be assigned to? So you might argue that uh, the person who certain people within the group, like for example the project manager, might say I don't want to be assigned issues, for example, or uh, the people who, the testers uh, may well. It's, it's a debatable one. It's one for you to have a think about. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So that's that. Resolve issues is simply what it says on the tin. The ability to resolve an issue, close is the same. Uh, you know, if you if you uh, need to be able to close an issue. So typically, for a permission scheme, the resolve issues uh, functionality would be uh, the remit of the assignee. So the assignee resolves an issue, and the reporter then closes an issue. Yep. So if we make resolve issue assign current assignee. So the current assignee can resolve an issue, and uh, the issue can be closed by, let's say, the reporter. Okay, the reporter. But what you might also want to bear in mind is that sometimes, uh, for whatever reason, uh, these people might not uh, be available. So oftentimes it's useful to add in an extra layer of permission. So, for example, all administrators can do all things. Yep. Okay, so uh, group uh, administrators or project role, uh, as we discussed earlier. Yeah. So um, close issues a reporter, modify a reporter. Uh, that's uh, up to you to decide who can do that within your 
organization, delete an issue. Mm, don't want users to be able to do that. If they need to get a shot of something, then the administrator can do that for them. Okay, uh, link an issue together. So linking is very simple. We'd simply go link, and then we'd simply uh, let's have a little look. Uh, so we can link it to that one. Uh, this, is, oh, oh, this is a link. Okay, link it together. Okay, and you'll see it's now appeared there. Yep. Okay, with a comment at the bottom. So that's what that controls. Set issue security. Again, this is something I'm not particularly expert on, um, but uh, I believe that that would allow you to. Yeah. It, it, again, it's is what what it says really. If if you need to use that. Uh, view voters and watchers. That's just to say who's watching this, who's voted on this. Manage watchers. Um, allow someone to, for example, say you're not allowed to watch this anymore, or you must be watching this, for example, because it matters to you. Uh, add comments, edit all comments, edit own comments, blah blah blah. That's all self-explanatory. Self-explanatory about creating and deleting attachments, and time tracking. So working on issues and editing work logs and that sort of thing. Yep, I th I think pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so uh, good luck with that, and uh, that's the end of this uh, video. In the next video, we'll be looking into setting up a custom workflow. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.